In today's video, I'm going to talk to you about the IELTS reading test. Basically, I'm going to talk about the academic aspect, not the general aspect, okay? So, if you're writing the IELTS academic, then um, this video is for you. Most people have been asking me, what strategy did you use to pass the IELTS reading test? And that is the answer I'm going to give in this video. So, if you have issues or if you have I mean, difficulty dealing with the IELTS reading test, then I think this video will go a long way to help you. So, um, why don't you stay tuned as we learn together. I'm going to share with you every strategy that did help me pass the IELTS reading test and eventually give me the required band score I wanted. So, if you are interested, why don't you stay tuned as we learn together. Okay, welcome back. If you are new on my channel, my name is Seth Tarakon Ajimai and uh, I am a one-time IELTS test taker and I believe in sharing my experience with I mean, people who are interested in taking the IELTS and uh, whatever I'm going to share with you here is the strategy I used that did help me get the band score I was looking for. Okay, Let me start it this way. Ask many people why they won't write the IELTS and they will tell you it's because of the IELTS reading test. Why won't they write IELTS because of this test? Because you see, it seems to be very difficult for most people. And the reason is that, first of all, you only have 60 minutes to answer 40 questions. And these 40 questions are bound to three long passages. So you have to spend at least 20 minutes for passage one, 20 minutes for passage two, and then 20 minutes for passage three. And then these passages increase in order of difficulty. So it is easy to say that passage one is much easier as compared to passage two and then passage three is the most difficult so you just have to be very careful to utilize your time well otherwise you end up i mean losing most of the marks you end up not answering most of the questions and that is where the difficulty comes in now another thing here is that you see most people find the IELTS reading test to be very difficult because because it's not so easy finding your answers to be able to find the right answers, you have to have the right strategy and then technique. And I believe that I'll be sharing with you one or two of them in this video. And then most people see the IELTS reading test to be very difficult because they haven't gotten any concrete strategy to um, probably deal with this particular aspect of the IELTS. And what I say is that if you've registered for the IELTS and you haven't gotten any concrete strategy, any prominent strategy that you keep on practicing with then you should rest assured that you are not ready for the IELTS yet because should you go into it the possibility that you are going to fail on the first attempt is very high okay so this is one of the reasons why people see the IELTS reading test be very difficult and the last reason has to do with the different question types there's no one question type to the IELTS reading test um, probably we have multiple choice questions we have summary completion we have true or false no giving we have yes or no no giving we have matching headings matching features uh, sentence completion and a whole lot of that okay so you should be able to familiarize yourself with all these question types in order to um, conquer the IELTS reading test so basically these are some of the reasons why people see the IELTS reading test to be very difficult but I don't have to worry in as much as some people or somebody has been able to get by nine in the IELTS reading test I mean, it's a possibility that I can also do it, okay? It's a matter of putting your strategies right. It's a matter of doing one or two things, which I'll be sharing with you in this video. All right, so I believe that you know the number of passages you'll be dealing with, three long passages. And um, each passage has got about 13, at least 13 questions for you to answer. So in all, you're answering 40 questions. And for you to be able to pursue your dream to work as a nurse or midwife, or as a health personnel in the UK, you need a band score of 7 plus to be able to achieve the UK's requirement. I mean, the UK's English proficiency requirement. All right. Okay. So once you go into these exams, your target should be band 7 and above. Should you get something below that, then it means that you have to reset. And that will be so frustrating because it may mean that you have wasted away money, time, and then energy. Okay. So, um, what strategy? the use in getting the IELTS reading test right. Let's look at it this way. Imagine you are a hunter and you have been put to the forest to search for one particular animal. 
Now, to be able to discover this animal, you know, in the forest there are quite a lot of animals, both big and small, both wide and tame. Now, to be able to figure out this particular animal and then kill or shoot at, you should be very skillful, you should be a skillful hunter. So, I just want you to perceive the IELTS reading test as, I mean, the three long passages as a forest, okay? And you being an IELTS test taker, probably perceive yourself to be the hunter. You are in the forest to look for these animals and then consider the animals to be the answers. So, it's like... We have the forest, we have the animal, and then we have the hunter. So just look at yourself this way. But the IELTS test taker, you are going to take the exams. You have a long passage in front of you, and then there are some answers hidden in there. You are supposed to discover them. Now, to be able to get the answers right, you have your strategy, you should have your tricks right. And that is why, I mean, if you see somebody get by nine in the IELTS reading test, it's not a C or it didn't come by chance or it wasn't a coincidence. The person did, I mean, inculcate certain traits and strategies that went all the way to help him or her so i believe that if you have a strategy i mean a concrete one of course then um you should be able to um excel in the IELTS reading test so one may ask what do i mean by a concrete strategy or what qualifies a concrete strategy now i'm going to share with you my strategy and with this strategy what happened was it did help me save time Probably I could work my way around the 60 minutes time I was given. And that is why I consider that to be a concrete strategy that it helped me. And then more so, it helped me to discover my answers that fast. So that also qualifies a concrete strategy. So if you have a strategy that helps you to probably work within the stipulated time, if you have a strategy that helps you to discover your answers so fast, if you have a strategy that gives you the confidence that you can pass the IELTS once and for all, I mean the IELTS reading test um, as a goal, then you should be rest assured that that strategy you are having is concrete. I mean, it's worth it. It can help you get the pound score you are looking for. Okay, now I wanted to move on to talk about the strategy that did help me pass the IELTS reading test. There are two of them I'm going to share with you here. And uh, let me say this. I can't guarantee this is going to help you. And you know, you putting that to practice on the first attempt doesn't mean that I mean you are going to get it right. It's a matter of practicing with it. I've shared this with most of my friends and it has been very helpful. It might seem difficult at the start, but if you keep on practicing the art, if you keep on practicing with it, it will become part and parcel of you and you see that very, very helpful. But all in all, I'm not assuring you that my strategy may be very helpful to you. I believe that there's one thing in here that I will say that will go a long way, at least extracting that strategy or extracting that thing and adding it to yours will make a difference. Yeah, I believe in that. So just watch this video to the end. And it's quite unfortunate I'm not doing a display for you to see. But I strongly believe that whatever I'm saying here, you can picture that in your mind. I mean, have that mental picture and then see how um, things go. Probably be able to decipher what I'm talking about, okay? But I want to promise you that I'm coming up with a webinar that I would have a display of it, just show you how the whole thing goes about. So what I entreat you to do is that just pick a pen and paper and uh, I have about two examples here that we are going to use to probably run ourselves through the strategy I'm going to talk about, okay? Alright, I'm sorry I haven't had any screen display to uh, let you understand better. Alright, so the first strategy I inculcated was to answer two question types at a go. I mean, how is that possible? Well, let me explain. You see, you have three long passages to answer within a space of 60 minutes. And these passages increases in order of difficulty. So passage one is quite easier, passage two is much better than passage three. And then passage three is the most difficult, okay? So the strategy here is that you should be able to, you are looking at how you can save time, okay? You are looking at how you can probably use about 15 minutes to finish up the passage one which is quite easy and then channel the remaining five minutes to either the passage two or the passage three because there you have to spend i mean a lot of time to figure out the answers because the passage is quite um difficult okay so that is why it's better you answer two questions as you go in the first passage probably you can shift this strategy to the second passage it is still possible and i'll show you how so i just wanted to take note of the first strategy that did help me beat time answer two question types at a go so let's say your passage one has two different question types for instance true or false not given and summary completion 
and the true or false not given is the first questions i mean it comes with the first questions from one to seven okay and the summary completion continues from eight to question 13. now how are you going to answer these two question types together let me show you this before you start take notice of the title of the passage i mean what is the passage talking about is it talking about technology is it talking about i mean culture is it talking about education discover what the passage is talking about i mean you can do that by reading the title of the passage okay now one thing about the IELTS reading test is that you can't read all the passage because sometimes even what you are reading you don't understand so it's not about reading to understand but it's about facing out your answers remember the hunter and the forest scenario i told you you are only in there to look out for your answers and that's the most important thing so people may suggest that you do the skimming scanning and then there's one i mean there are three of them yeah and that will help you to probably figure out your answer now to be able to answer two questions at a go you should be able to discover your key wish okay your key words probably are those that will help you discover your answer in the passage now let me explain further so when i say keyword what i mean is that it's any word that cannot be paraphrased so what's the meaning of paraphrased well paraphrasing is like um, replacing one word with another i mean working out words that are synonymous okay so it's like you have this particular word and at the point it is replaced with another word which is synonymous or which has the same meaning as um that previous word okay now you should be able to discover your keywords in the passage so we call that the keyword technique there are two things you have to do here your ability to discover the keyword in the passage and your ability to discover the keyword in the question okay so let's look at an example here let's say you have passage one your first seven questions is about true or false not given. I'm not going to explain what this category of questions looks like. Um, I believe that you have a well idea of that already. Okay, But if you don't, then I think um, you can probably make a research about it and basically look at what this question type is all about. But all in all, what I have to say is that, you see, as the name implies, true, false, not given. So there will be a statement on your question paper. Okay, For example, in 1985, and not just discovered a robot now for you to say that this statement is true you should find that in the passage for you to say that this statement is false it should be the opposite in the passage and for you to say that this statement is not given it should not be found in the passage at all so that is basically the simple explanation i can give to the true or false not given question types all right so now if you have your first set of questions one to seven to be true or false not given and you want to answer two question types at a go so first of all you have to spot the first keyword for question one and then one important thing is that usually the true or false not given comes in order i mean they follow that particular order so if you get your answer to question one then it means that the answer to question two is below the question answer to question one and it goes in that order so you get your last answer okay so you first of all have to spot the keyword for the first question of the true or false not given so here if the sentence is in 1985 and not just discovered a robot so you ask yourself which keyword can i spot in here for me i can discover two keywords in 1985 now this is a keyword because it cannot be paraphrased it cannot be changed no matter what there's no way that can replace 1985 so what this means is that in as much as i'm seeing 1985 on the question paper when i go to the passage i'll still see 1985 so the moment i see 1985 somewhere in the passage it tells me that this is where my answer to question one is and i have to be very careful i have to read carefully and then probably slowly to discover the answer just to understand and see if it is true or false or not given okay so if probably you look you skin and scam through the passage and you are not seeing 1985 and that should tell you that it is not given i mean there's nothing in there that probably uh, signifies this statement and that you are going for not given okay but the very moment you spot 1985 in there then it should tell you that is either your answer is going to be true or false so i'm not here to probably let you know how to answer the true or false not given but I'm just trying to tell you how to answer two questions at a go. So once you spot the keyword, which is 1985, 
Another keyword here can be Arnold Gist. It's a name of a person. It cannot be paraphrased. It cannot be changed. So as you see it here, so it will be in the passage. So you can keep any of these keywords in mind. Okay. So let's say I'm keeping 1985 in mind. All right. So once I start reading from, I, I start skimming and it's coming from the first paragraph of the passage. I'm looking out for 1985. Remember, you are not reading the passage into details because, I mean, you are not there to read and understand. You are looking for your answers. Okay. Now, once I know the keyword, I keep that in mind. Okay, 1985. So wherever I meet 1985, I know I'm, 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 I'm about getting an answer to question one for the true or false not given. And then the second thing I have to do is that I'll go to the second question type which is summary completion which has questions 8 to 13 and i'll spot the first keyword in there so the second uh, sentence yes is that december is always a memorable day for and then there will be some a blank space left for you to provide an answer okay so you ask yourself what keyword can i also spot here is it december is it memorable day well the best keyword here is December because December is the name of a month and it cannot be paraphrased. There is no other word can, that can replace December. So that should be a perfect keyword for you to probably look out for your answer in the passage. But if you go for memorable day, there are so many words that can replace memorable day. Okay. An unforgettable day. So probably you might spot memorable day as a keyword and then you go to the passage trying to look for memorable day. Meanwhile, it has been changed to an unforgettable day. And probably you see, you waste time, it wouldn't be able to get the answer to that particular question okay so you just have to take note now so i spot to um december as my keyword for the second um question type which is summary completion so once i start looking out for 1985 in the passage i still have on my mind december so if let's say i see 1985 in let's say paragraph one of the first passage then that tells me that I'm getting my answer to the first question for the true or false not given. Okay, so I can pause the read around that area and then get my answer. Now, probably maybe just after 1985, you came across the word December. That should tell you that your answer to the first question of the summary completion is also around that area. Okay, so probably all you have to do is that just make sure you use your pencil to circle December draw a long line outside the passage and then write the number eight around it that should tell you that that is where you can find your answer to question eight basically i don't know if what i'm seeing here is well understood but i think i mean you are getting the concept so i'm just showing you the ability to answer two questions at a go so there are times you may get all the answers for um let's see the summary completion it's like you have only gotten about three answers today first question which is the true or false not given so you are able to answer two questions at a go it's very very important it saves you time it's like you don't have to read the passage twice so assuming that you want to answer the true or false not given at a whole what this means is that you have to go through the passage and then get the answers for the true or false not given now when you complete that you have to also start reading from the passage once more to look for the answers for the summary completion and that is a total waste of time you only have 20 minutes to possibly work your way out to find answers to these um, 13 questions in the passage one so you ask yourself even the passage is too long to the point that by the time you finish reading it feels about 10 minutes to read the passage so imagine you only have five minutes to answer 13 questions which is impossible so your ability to work i mean answer two questions at a go is very very important and that is possible if you can spot the first keyword for your first questions and then the second keyword for the first question of the other type of i mean um question you are having so in this case you spot the first keyword for the true or false not giving question types and then the first keyword for the summary completion question type and you keep the two in mind okay so once you come across 1985 it tells you that okay this is where you can get your answer to the um question uh, the first question of the true or false not giving and once you come across december it might happen that you might come across December even before coming across the 1985. So it tells you that, okay, you can get your answer to question 8 around that area. So that is why the keyword technique, your ability to discover what the keyword is, is very important. And I mean, you'll be able to work two question types at a go. 
So this is one of the strategies that it helped me beat time. It's like I was able to answer the questions within a space of 15 minutes and sometimes 18 minutes. So it's like I have five minutes to channel to the passage two and three or two minutes to channel to the passage two and three, which is fair enough. Okay. And the second strategy is that you should don't waste time. There are times you wouldn't find an answer so easily. Don't be bothered. So let's say um, with the same example I cited. So let's say with the two of us not given, you found an answer to question one based on the keyword you noted 1985. Now you couldn't discover any proper keyword in the question two. So it's like we're not getting the answer. Don't worry. Go to the, the third question, spot a keyword, come back to the passage and then look out for that keyword. Now, once you see that keyword, you should be notified that that is where your answer is and you have to be careful, read and understand so that you get the answer right in there. Don't skim and scan, pause and then read very well. Now, once you're able to discover the answer to question three based on the keyword you saw, you should be rest assured that the answer to question two is between question one and then question three. So that is why I usually prefer to indicate with pencil wherever I found my answer. So if I found my answer in the paragraph A of the first passage, what I do is that I just have to say, okay, this is where I had the answer. And I'll trace a line outside the passage and I indicate this is where I had question one. So if I couldn't get question two, probably I know that the question two is between question the answer to question two is between question one and then question three. And if I have to leave that for a later day or a later time, I can easily, I mean, come over and then look out for my answers. I wouldn't have to struggle looking at where did I find the answer to question one, where did I find the answer to question three. I mean, so this strategy can help be tied. I mean, I think this is one of the, I think this was the basic thing that made the magic. And if you can practice as such, then I believe that, I mean, the reading will be very easy for you, okay? So, I wouldn't want to talk much. I think I've explained to you the bigger strategy that did help me. If you can inculcate, if you can practice with this strategy, then uh, um, trust me, um, the reading will be very simple. You have the confidence to go in all and in past ones. Just look at the concept of the forest and the hunter. Um, you are not there to probably, I mean, understand the passage. You are there to look for answers. Okay. So how can help you get the answers? The strategy. All right. If you want more of my um, reading tips, if you want me to help you out, I'm available. Probably um, just hit me up. I'll leave some information about me i mean some details contacts about me in the description but just take that out and we can talk thank you very much if you have not subscribed just make sure that you are subscribing to my youtube channel so that i become part of the family see you in my next video